Hi, I'm Ryan Samansky, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we've got another video for you in our series on Would That Have Sunk New Jersey, where we compare the explosions or actions that led to the sinkings of other uh, World War II era warships, and we look at would that actually sink an Iowa-class battleship, or does some feature of the Iowa class's design uh, make them less likely to sink in those circumstances? Check out this video on the sinkings of the uh, Pearl Harbor battleships and if New Jersey could have survived there. Also check out this video that Jack Innefeld did on what sank HMS Hood. Today's video is going to be on would what sank Hood have sunk New Jersey. We chose to do this video because there has been a tremendous amount of discussion come about recently since Drek Hennefeld's video. Again, I highly recommend you listen to that because he uses some of the most modern scholarship to, uh, to start the discussion or restart the discussion. Hood was sunk in the Denmark Strait by the German battleship Bismarck and heavy cruiser Prinz Eugen on May 24th, 1941. After just a couple of minutes in combat, a shell, likely from Bismarck's eighth shell salvo, struck Hood amidships, probably detonated a magazine, and caused the ship to be blown in half and sink in a matter of minutes. Only three crew members from Hood survived. Hood was, for most of the treaty period, the largest warship in the world, and the most powerful. As built, she had a speed of 32 knots, uh, so the British classified her as a battle cruiser. She had eight 15-inch guns, but she also had armor plating uh, equal to any of the other 15-inch armed battleships that the British had built up to that point. While she was originally laid down as a battle cruiser, she was laid down on the date of the Battle of Jutland, uh, which caused the British to reevaluate their battlecruiser designs after a number of them blew up spectacularly after uh, magazine explosions. So, Hood was redesigned to receive armor on par with battleships. And so, myself and a number of other historians consider her to, in fact, be a fast battleship, the first fast battleship, arguably, uh, and not a battle cruiser, even though that's what the British called her because she could make 32 knots. A comparison of Hood and Bismarck shows that the two ships are relatively similar. Hood's a little bit longer, Bismarck is a little bit wider. They both have speeds a little bit above 30 knots, they both have eight 15 inch guns, um, the secondary batteries are pretty comparable, the armor plating isn't that significantly different. Uh, both ships use a turtle back design, which is very different from what New Jersey has, uh, in which there is an armored belt. In Hood's case, she's the first ship to receive an angled armor belt to make her armor more uh, effective. And then behind that armored belt is a turtle deck. It goes up at an angle and it's got a flat section across the midships and comes back down. So that means that uh, depending on where the shell is hitting, it's either hitting at an unfavorable angle or it has to punch through multiple uh, armored levels, which even armor-piercing shells like New Jersey's super heavy 16-inch shells, uh, they're only designed to punch through one piece of armor before they explode on the inside. They've got a special heavy cap on them, which is uh, largely destroyed in the process of punching through armor. And so if they then encounter more armor after that, they likely aren't going to penetrate. Hood's explosion has been a mystery since it happened. There is no recording of it like there was for Arizona's destruction. Uh, nothing close enough up you can see. There was a combat cameraman on Prince Eugen whose footage survived, but it's at a range of about uh, somewhere around 10 miles. 
Uh, if Bismarck had any footage, it would also be at that range, but it was lost when the ship was lost. Uh, Prince of Wales was looking in the wrong direction. Norfolk, Suffolk, the British destroyers that were involved in the action, didn't catch any of it. Uh, and of course, if Hood had any records, they were lost along with the ship. A lot has been said about this battle in the past, so I will only quickly recap the most recent scholarship and uh, the battle before I start talking about would that sort of shell hit have damaged, uh, have destroyed New Jersey in the same fashion. Hood was the flagship of Admiral Lancelot Holland, and she was operating alongside uh, the brand new battleship Prince of Wales. Prince of Wales had not completed her sea trials, and during the battle, she still had uh, shipyard workers on board. Her crew was relatively green, and she uh, suffered from turret jamming throughout the battle, which reduced the number of guns she could fire. Uh, this was an issue that plagued the King George V class battleships throughout their entire career. Hood, although being um, a powerful ship, was old. She's the equivalent fighting power to Bismarck, but she is fairly old, 20-some-odd uh, years older than the German ship. So even though the technology is comparable, or the, the equipment is comparable, Hood's is just older. It's more worn out. Even though she could have made 32 knots as built, she was only able to make about 28 knots during the engagement. She, uh, during the pre-war years, had an extremely experienced crew on board. She was the pride of the Royal Navy. She had some of the best of the best who had served on board for a long time. This experienced crew had even fought in the Mediterranean uh, and bombarded French battleships at Mirz el Kabir. However, as the Royal Navy was expanding with new ships like King George V, Prince of Wales coming online, these experienced crew members were siphoned off of Hood's crew to form the core of new crews. And so by the Battle of the Denmark Strait, Hood's crew was relatively green and inexperienced. Uh, and what experience they had had was in anti-aircraft operations. They, they had fought off a lot of German and Italian aircraft. They hadn't actually uh, had much training on the ship's guns. Bismarck was new, uh, and her crew had about as much time at sea as Hood's. But Bismarck had been training extensively in the Baltic which was essentially a German lake at this point. Um, and the British didn't have anything comparable they could do. Hood's, uh, Bismarck's crew had specifically been training for surface battles, uh, and even some of their training was simulated against HMS Hood, the pride of the Royal Navy. During the battle, Hood and Prince of Wales open fire first. However, because they are closing with the German ships, they can only fire with their forward guns. They were at a range where they could have um, turned broadside, but Admiral Holland wanted to close the distance so that uh, Hood's relatively weak deck armor, it wasn't weak compared to contemporary ships, but we're looking at her 20 years later when the ranges of combat have extended, uh, he, he was concerned about her deck armor, so he was trying to close the range as much as possible uh, before continuing the engagement. Hood initially started firing at Prince Eugen, which, due to radar uh, due to radar faults on Bismarck, had been moved to the front of the line instead of uh, the back of the line. Bismarck's the flagship and the larger ship. She should have been at the front. And both ships had a similar enough silhouette that the green crew on Hood uh, didn't recognize it. So Hood opens fire first, but She's only firing half her salvo, half her guns, and she's firing at the wrong ship initially. Uh, eventually, they figure out what the issue is and switch fire to Bismarck. Uh, eventually, the Germans start returning fire. Initially, Admiral Luchens wanted to avoid engagement rather than actually fight, uh, as fighting the battle violated his uh, rules of engagement orders. But he was trapped by the British ships. He had British cruisers behind him, uh, an ice pack on uh, one side, and the two British battleships closing on the other at uh, about the same speed he could make. So 
they open fire. Bismarck is only firing four shot salvos. Uh, so they fire the forward four guns, watch where the shells land, adjust, and then fire the aft four guns. So they fire eight of these salvos. Uh, Prinz Eugen, with her eight inch guns, is also in range, uh, and both ships are firing at Hood, uh, the lead British ship. Prince Eugen actually drew first blood in the battle. She is credited with scoring a hit on Hood amidships that set off ready service ammunition and uh, all of the wooden boats and gasoline that were stored there. Hood had a huge midships section between the after funnel and uh, the after turrets. And this was used as a, as a boat park, and it's where most of the anti-aircraft guns were. So the ready service ammunition cooked off, uh, the fuel was cooking off for the boats, and um, it caused a fire. The fire didn't endanger the ship in any way, uh, and some of the uh, interviews with people following the battle uh, suggest that British officers said to just let the fire burn itself out rather than rushing in while ammunition was exploding there. Again, uh, four-inch ready service ammunition isn't going to endanger the ship. There are hoists from there to the four-inch magazines, uh, but the one surviving crew member from that area recounted that they were closed. So it's unlikely that sparks from this hit uh, several minutes later, made it down these hoists into the magazines and caused the fatal detonation. Another shot hit Hood, uh, probably also fired by Prinz Eugen, uh, in the spotting platform on top of the tripod mast. Despite knocking out that uh, fire control equipment up there, didn't endanger the ship in any way. And finally, on the 8th salvo of Bismarck, uh, she straddled the hit and scored at least one shell hit, maybe more. Um, most of the British observers were looking at the German ships, but some people who British Boards of Inquiry interviewed uh, saw what they thought was a shell hit on Hood, followed by uh, a huge tower of sparks or flame shooting up amidships forward of the after turret where about where the mast is uh, and they recounted it being uh, relatively noiseless which is uh, on track with a magazine explosion venting upwards through the path of least resistance uh, in this case going into an engine room and then up through some of the air intakes located amidships uh, following that a uh, massive explosion ripped the ship in half and she sunk in a matter of minutes. Uh, anyone who survived the explosion and then the suction of the ship being uh, sinking rapidly uh, was then in the freezing Denmark Strait waters uh, among ice flows and only three crew members were rescued by the escorting British destroyers. So that limits the amount of information we have about what happened. Uh, a number of theories have been put forward that uh, Bismarck shell punched straight through the deck into a magazine. Uh, that's the most prevalent theory. But that's not necessarily what happened. The projectile, if it was punching through the deck, that would have assumed that the ship was at relatively long range. Hood was in the process of turning. Uh, depending on what source you ask, she had either just started or just finished a turn to bring her entire broadside to bear on the German ships. Uh, this implied that the range was close enough that her deck armor wasn't going to be hit. That was Admiral Holland's intention. Had the deck armor been hit, the German projectile would have had to go through several decks to get down to a magazine and explode and de destroy the ship. And uh, it's unlikely that this happened. The more likely place that the shell would have hit would have been uh, on Hood's side. 
hit the side armor. Hood's angled belt would have defeated a German 15-inch shell. It was designed to defeat 15-inch shells. Uh, there were upper belts above the roughly 12-inch main belt. There was a 7-inch belt and then a 5-inch belt above that, which is fairly common in World War I era designs, though completely obsolete by uh, World War II. A 15-inch projectile could have punched through either the 5-inch side armor or the 7-inch uh, upper belt, regardless of uh, what angle it was hitting at. That sort of armor just really couldn't defeat the armor-piercing shell. But it would have probably decapped it and prevented it from going much further. So once this shell punches through that, it then has to go through the angled part of the turtle deck, then it ends up in an engine room, most likely, and then it has to get into a magazine past that, which again is an unlikely series of events. Um, what Drac thought was most likely was that a shell hit just short of Hood and was able to punch through beneath the armored belt. Hood's torpedo defense uh, was a system of crushing tubes that was not as effective as, say, the layered-type torpedo defense on Iowa-class battleships. Uh, and it didn't have as much layering as any of the deck armor. Uh, so if a projectile was able to either hit and go through the water and punch through there, or, as Drax speculates, hit in a trough of a wave where the ship traveling at high speed causes a high bow wave and then a trough by roughly the place where the explosion happened, uh, then the projectile might not have even hit the water and decapped itself, uh, and it might have been able to punch through into an engine room, uh, explode it in the engine room, sending a hot shrapnel through a bulkhead into the 4-inch magazine, which would have then detonated the 15-inch after magazines and caused the magazine explosion that you see working its way up through the engine room and eventually destroying the ship. I'm not entirely convinced that that's what happened, but... Drax video presents a, a very compelling argument about that that covers a lot of stuff, and I'm glad that it has started the discussion again. Uh, really, the last time the destruction of Hood was discussed uh, was back when her wreck was found, I think in the early 2000s. Uh, and that was something I was interested that Drax didn't bring up in his video, the state of the wreck. Uh, Hood's wreck is not in two pieces like everybody saw her sink in, but in fact in three places, uh, in three large pieces. It seems like there was an explosion uh, in the after magazines that blew the stern off the ship. It looks like the entire starboard side blew out, uh, as if fuel tanks all along the side exploded, which would be highly uncommon if that's what happened. But Another explosion occurred in the forward magazines that blew the bow off the ship. Uh, this was not witnessed in any of the sources. Uh, witnesses describe the explosion just forward to the after turrets, breaking the ship in half, and then the ship going down in two pieces. Uh, the, the wreck just doesn't meet with that, and the uh, debris field doesn't make it look like it happened like when the ship impacted the bottom and, and the thing fell apart. The debris field has two large areas where stuff was dumped, where an explosion ripped the ship in half and everything just fell out. So it's unclear what this means for what actually sank the hood. Now, would that have sunk New Jersey? I think it would have. Uh, the shot that sunk the hood, regardless of where it hit, should not have. Uh, it, it was a golden BB, a miracle shot that somehow found its way through uh, what was a fairly effective armor scheme. Uh, and so I believe that had Bismarck fired a shot like that at New Jersey, that same golden BB effect would have happened and it would have somehow found its way through. Uh, New Jersey's magazines are similarly extensive as Hood's. Uh, Hood tended to have the secondary battery magazines near the main battery magazines. Uh, New Jersey's 
secondary battery magazines are spread out uh, above the engineering spaces along both sides of the amidship section of the ship. Uh, that means it's unlikely for a hit there to cause a secondary explosion to then destroy the main battery uh, magazine and destroy the whole ship. Uh, but it is probably more likely that any given shell that punches through the uh, armored citadel will find a magazine to detonate. Again, a five inch magazine blowing up probably wouldn't destroy the ship and it probably wouldn't spread to other magazines, but it would do a tremendous amount of damage. Likely, uh, if a German 15-inch armor-piercing shell destroyed New Jersey uh, in the same way as Hood, it would somehow either punch through the deck or the belt to hit the uh, after 16-inch magazines, and, and that would cause a similar explosion that would rip the ship in half and cause her to sink. Um, the magazines are the most armored part of the ship. An armor-piercing shell has to either punch through uh, three decks to get into the armored citadel and then through some other bulkheads to get to the magazines, which again, those armor piercing shells aren't designed to punch through that much, or it has to punch through the belt armor. If we assume that uh, Jack NFL's theory is correct and it punched through um, below the waterline somehow, New Jersey's belt does thin out as it gets lower. Um, but, especially back aft, there's an extremely effective uh, torpedo defense system with pretty good depth to it. Up at the bow, where it's narrower, there's less depth, and, and perhaps it would be more likely for the shell to hit there. In general, I would say it's unlikely for Bismarck's shell to be able to punch through New Jersey's armor at all, uh, and I would say that it was unlikely for Bismarck's shell to be able to punch through Hood's armor. But again, because that happened, uh, we have what I would term the golden BB effect, and a similar golden BB hit to New Jersey would produce the same results. Be sure to check out this video that uh, I made comparing Bismarck to an Iowa-class battleship. While New Jersey wasn't in commission until two years after Bismarck had already been sunk, there was a very real chance she could have fought the German battleship Tirpitz if Tirpitz had been able to sortie in 1943 when New Jersey was on her uh, first deployments in the Atlantic. What video would you like to see us make next comparing what sunk another battleship to the armor of an Iowa-class battleship? I'm inclined to make a video about Bismarck now that we've talked about Hood. Uh, however, I've also seen some interest on uh, could what sunk Yamato or Musashi have sunk New Jersey. Let us know in the description below, and uh, wh whichever ship gets the most uh, suggestions, we'll make the next video about. Thanks for watching. The Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, and also from viewers like you. Your support allows us to make multiple videos a week, including videos where we get to travel to other historic sites. If you want notifications when these new videos are coming out, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.